the Damon Runyon Theatre. Once again, the Damon Runyon Theatre brings you another story by the master storyteller, Damon Runyon. And this one, Dream Street Rose. And to tell it to you, here is Broadway. Thanks. It is early of an evening, about midnight, when there is nothing much doing anywhere, that I go around to Good Time Charlie's place in West 47th Street. I figure maybe I will have a few games of rummy with Charlie. In fact, we are just sitting down when Charlie looks toward the back door and says, Now, why does that dame got to pick my place to come in? Huh? Oh, Dream Street Road. Yeah. Well, I guess I will be going. It, no, please do not leave me alone with her, Broadway. You are afraid of her? Look, when she comes in the door and stands like that, I know she is looking for somebody to talk to. And when nobody listens, she is liable to bust up the joint. I guess she is just lonesome, Charlie. After all, she is quite an old doll. And many citizens like him shading 20 instead of maybe 60. She is looking at us. Come on, deal the cards. Maybe she will take the hint and go away. Nope, she is coming over. We will not listen to her talk. Maybe silence will discourage her. Okay, okay. Just say hello and leave it at that. Hello, boys. Oh, uh, hello, Rose. Uh, hiya, Rose. Gonna play rummy, huh? Yeah, we are just starting. Uh, your deal, Charlie. Yeah, sure. Uh, nice seeing you, Rose. That's okay. Go ahead. Deal the cards. And while you play, I'll tell you a story. I want to talk to somebody. Oh. What's the matter, Charlie? Uh, nothing. You don't like for me to come in here. Do I say anything like that, Rose? Yeah. The way you look at me. Okay, maybe I ain't plush and mink. But I'm people, ain't I? Look, Rose, nobody says anything against you. Nobody has to. <laughs> All they gotta do is look, and I know what they think. Broadway, you're a good guy. You see a lot of people, but never like me, huh? Rose, like you say, you are people. Nobody thinks so. I'm just Dream Street Rose. The old doll who pushes a mop for a living. Broadway, she is lighted up. Me, no! Look, Rose, maybe you better go home. Come on, I will walk with no, you and we will talk. No, I'm Okay, Rose. You say you have got something on your mind? I don't talk about it. I've got to tell you about a friend of mine. Sure, sure. Go ahead. If it makes you feel any better, go ahead. I've got to talk about this friend of mine. She's pretty, Broadway. Real pretty. Yeah, well, what about her, Rose? You're a good guy, Broadway. I'll tell you. It's a good story. You'll like it. <laughs> Now, when Rose is feeling like telling a story, people listen. Because otherwise, Dream Street Rose is more than six to five to start tossing things around and making the atmosphere unpleasant. So, we let her tell a story. And it is a strange one. And I will tell it to you in a minute. Now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Dream Street Rose. Like I say, Dream Street Rose wants to tell us a story about her friend. Now, maybe I better tell you why she is called Dream Street Rose. It is because she lives in a part of the 40s where there are many theatrical hotels and rooming houses, and all the characters who live there gab and gab about what is coming up, all good. This gab is dreamy, very dreamy indeed, because nothing good ever happens to them. Rose is like that. She is always talking to anybody who will listen. Tonight, Rose says as follows. Well, Broadway, Charlie, you know where Colorado is? Sure, uh, uh, west of Albany. Uh-huh. Well, a long time ago, my friend lived in a little town in Colorado. She was a waitress there in her old man's joint. She was a good kid. She was real good. Okay, I will buy that. Now, what is the rest of the story? Pretty as a picture, that kid was. Had all the guys nuts about her. But you know what, Broadway? She gives nobody a tumble. No. And then one day, 
A guy walks in she never seen before. Ain't much for looks, but he had a nice smile, and he sat down at the counter, and he says to my friend... Hello. Hello. What do you have? Oh, ham and, I guess. All right. Fry two with. How do you want the eggs? Light over. Easy over. You mind if I ask you a question? The answer is no. <laughs> now, don't get excited, kid. All I wanted to know is, what's the best place in town to stay? Oh, well, the Santa Fe house, I guess. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I didn't run true to form, did I? I don't know what you mean. I was supposed to comment on your eyes, your complexion, your, um, well, everything. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> now what's so funny? Oh, you small-town characters are all alike. What's the matter with small towns and people? Not a thing. I like them. Then why'd you say that? Oh, forget it. I'm sorry. Really. Why'd you say it? Okay, I'll tell you. So you're pretty. Every customer who wears pants and comes in here gives you a line. You expect it. Then when somebody comes in who's been around and has seen more than a than a jerkwater junction and a doll face waitress, you, you, you... Well, when somebody like that comes in and doesn't spread butter all over the place, you get sore. You're pretty smart, aren't you? No, just been around, that's all. Lots of people have. I know. Now, let's stop talking. I came in here to eat. I'm going to eat in silence. Well, Dream Street Rose tells me that is the way her friend gets acquainted with this guy whose name is Frank McQuillan. It seems he's a pretty sharp citizen, and it is not long before he is making a good living at the local pool parlor. He is a pretty fair shot. Then, it comes up a couple of weeks later. And since Frank takes all his meals at the little lunch wagon, he and Rose's friend get to know each other better. In fact, one night, he takes her home from the lunch wagon. And while they are walking along, the scene is as follows. Frank. Yeah? Remember the first night you came into the lunch wagon? Mm-hmm. The eggs were fried too hard. Is that all you remember? <laughs> well, what else was there? You said something about small-town characters. Oh, forget it. I was tired and... Well, you burned me a little. Why? Well, the way you got sore. Well, I wasn't really. No? You acted like it. Maybe because... Well, I guess I was hurt. But why? Oh, I don't know. Because I didn't turn a backflip when you moved those eyes on me? <laughs> I'll give ten to one you got the locals jumping through hoops. You got a fine opinion of me, haven't you? Nothing one way or the other. What do you think? What's the difference? You think I'm a flirt? A fl you? Oh, no, not at all. You're making fun of me. No, no, I'm not. Why'd you laugh? Okay. All right, stop a minute. Yeah? You're not a flirt. You wouldn't know how to be one, kid. As far as you know, those eyes of yours are put in your head to see with. That's all. You stand behind that counter all day scared stiff. Scared? What? Of every guy who comes in. He makes a crack, you laugh, and give him the fast brush. But underneath, you're scared because you're just a pretty kid who doesn't know what two and two adds up to. Well? I hate you. Sure? Because I told you the truth. I'm... I'll give you ten to one you've never been kissed. I have to. By whom? Will Higginbottom. Oh, the clerk in the grocery. What's the matter with that? Nothing. Who said there was? It's always the way you say things. Like... Like you haven't got any use for anybody or anything. Maybe I haven't. Will the... Uh, He's a fine grocery clerk. And he kissed you. That makes him a big man. I like him. Okay, okay. Let's drop Will Higginbottom. He wants me to marry him. So marry him. I might. Such goings on. You're mean. You're mean and contemptible. Here's a change from grocery clerks. <laughs> Let me go. You want to be let go? Yeah. Frank, please. A grocery clerk was never like this. Frank. Frank. And so Rose's friend falls in love with his Frank citizen. And it is not long before other people know it, including Will Higginbottom, the grocery clerk. Then it comes up one night, Frank has taken Rose's friend home again, and they stop and sit on a bench in a little park. Something wrong, Frank? Hmm? Wrong? What? 
Oh, I don't know. I haven't said ten words all evening. Maybe I've got nothing to say. Oh. It's a nice night. Yes, well. There is something wrong, isn't there? Look, why do you keep saying that? A million and one things to talk about, and you keep going over that. Oh, I'm sorry, Frank. But what? You're leaving, aren't you? How do you know? Well, the last couple of days. I felt it. All right, so you felt right. What of it? Where are we going? What? Say that again, kid. I said, where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh. You tell me a joke, I laugh. Who said anything about we? I just... I mean, I thought... Are you kidding? What do you want from me? You love me. You told me. Did I? Well, you know you did, Frank. You know it. You told me a hundred times. Ninety-nine. Frank, you got to take me with you. Listen, kid, I'm a rolling stone here today, gone tomorrow. What fun would that be for you? I love you. Uh, you think. I do. All right, let's break this up. I didn't make any promises, did I? I didn't think promises were necessary. So nobody gets hurt. I will, Frank. <laughs> oh, now, now, forget it. No, I can't. But don't you understand, Frank? I love you. Well, ever since the first night you walked in the lunch wagon, you were different. Not much. Frank, listen to no, me. No, no, let's break you this can't, up. You can't, you've got to listen to me. I don't think so. Frank, where are you going? Away. I'll drop you a postcard. Please, I want to go with you. Frank, I'll make you happy, I promise. We'll be married. Ma oh, Matt. Big joke, huh, Frank? <laughs> Will. Sit down, Frank. Who do you think you are? Nobody, I said sit down. Why, you small town... Sit Please. down! You crazy hidden bottom. Put that gun away and go back home. I will, after you've married her. But... Now, listen, fine, fine, but and what is you've this? you've had a lot of it. Will, please go. With the two of you. What are you talking about? You're going home and get packed, Frank. And then the three of us are going over to Denver. I'll be best man. Why, if you think I'm going to stand for this... I don't think this way, Will. Please, I won't. Yes, you will. You love this guy, all right, he'll marry you. Now, look, Will, there's a law yes, that says I, I don't have... Yes, I've got it right here in my hand. All right, Frank, take your choice. We go to Denver or so help me, I'll blow a hole right through you. Well, that is that. The three of them go to Denver, and Rose's friend and Frank are married there. Now, that is only a little part of the story Rose tells me. And what the rest of it is and how it ends, I will tell you in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story... Dream Street Rose. Like I say, Rose gets to the part of the story about her friend where Frank marries her. Because Will Higginbotham holds a heater at Frank's middle, which is a unique way of getting to be best man, but it works. Then Rose goes on. Now that ain't the end. No, not by a long shot. I, I figure it is not. What's the matter? Don't you believe it? Oh, sure, sure. Only uh, I hear a million stories like it every day. Why, there are even a million movies about it. Sure, sure, I know it. But it's got an ending that ain't like the others. You want to hear it? Look, Rose, I got to be going because I... Okay. Well, my friend and Frank get married. And they leave, see? Now a lot of things happen. And one thing my friend finds out... Miss Frank, don't love her. It seems to me that your friend takes quite a bit of convincing. Yeah, that's right, Broadway. But I guess every dame thinks she can make a guy love her. Even a hundred percent heel like Frank. I guess so. Well, a couple of months go by. Don't take my friend long to find out that Frank don't like to work. He makes a living by being a good talker. And then one night... He comes into their hotel room. Frankie? No, Napoleon. Ha, ha. You got me being corny now. Oh, you're tired, honey. No, no, I'm full of vim and vigor. You ever comb your hair? I was just doing it when you came in. Uh-huh. Say, um, how would you like to go out tonight? Frankie, you mean it? I said it. Where, Frank? Where, honey? Black Emanuel. Oh, no, Frank. 
Someplace else. No, Frank. Someplace else. Now, look, you've been yapping about going out. Okay, I offered to take in your pull-along face. What's the matter with Emmanuel's place? I don't like him. Well, he likes you. I know. He's got good connections. Be nice to the guy and he'll do me some good. Oh, you don't need a person like Emmanuel, Frank. You've got brains. If you'd get a job, you'd be successful in no time at all. Oh, please, honey. I'll be ready in a half hour. If you're not, I'll leave without you. Uh, all right, Frank. I'll be ready. <laughs> Personally, I think Rosie's friend is a dope because nobody but a dope would string along with a citizen like Frank. But she sticks with him, and she smiles nice at Black Emmanuel, who smiles back. Then Rose says it comes up one night at Emmanuel's place, Rose's friend is sitting at a table waiting for Frank when the scene is as follows. Hello, baby. Uh, I sit down, yes? Hello, Emmanuel. Sure, sit down. Uh, thank you. <laughs> you look real extra pretty tonight, baby. Thank you. Oh, don't thank me. I thank you. You thank me? What for? Well, you, you make Emmanuel's place what you say, classy. Look around. What do you see, huh? Not pretty people like you. Sure, I like you. Maybe you like me, huh? Don't touch me. Why not? We're good friends, and Frank is... Frank's... What did he say? Well, nothing. What did he say? Tell me. Oh, well, look, baby, maybe you don't know, but... Frank, he... What about him? He's not coming tonight, baby. Well, why not? He told me he'd meet me here. <laughs> sure, but Frank, he's gone. Gone where? Away. Oh, you're lying. He didn't have any money to go anyplace. Well, I make him alone. He goes away and you're here. That's not true. I tell the truth always, baby. I give him money and he goes. But he leaves you here because he knows Emmanuel likes you. You mean he took money from you and l left me? Shh, talk too loud. Get your hands off me. Look, baby, I'm not so bad. You like me and I make things easy for you. You take a job here in my place, you make it class. Get away from me. Get away, I say. People are looking. Be quiet. I don't care. Get away. Leave me alone. Go away. All right, baby. Well, listen to Emmanuel. You find out it's not so good to be so hungry. Then maybe you come back to Emmanuel. Maybe you like me after all. Of course, I do not believe a word of what Rose says, because she is noted for making up stories that are like dreams. But I see that her eyes are full of tears as she says to me, Poor kid. You know what she did, Broadway? No, what? She took the job at Emmanuel's place. It's tough to be hungry and with no dough, no place to go. Well, why does she not go back to Colorado? She can't. Well, does she marry Black Emmanuel? No. She loved Frank. In fact, she prayed for him every night. She prayed for Frank. What? He pulls a big double cross and she remembers him in her prayers? Sure. Every night she prayed that Frank would be a big success like she always knew he could be. He had brains. She wanted him to make good. And does he? That's the funny part. He made good. In fact, right here in New York. But my friend didn't find it out until a couple of months ago. Yeah, now, wait a minute. Please do not tell me that she goes to him and he falls in love with her and is sorry for what he does. That is too much. She went to him. Yeah. My friend, after 20 years, went to Frank. She surprised him one night when he was alone. <laughs> My friend says she'll never forget the look on his face when he looked up and seen my friend standing there, big as life. He blinked a couple of times and then... You? Well, well you're dead. No, Frank. Not me. Uh, how did you get in here? I'll tell you that in a minute. You did all right for yourself, didn't you, Frank? What do you want, money? Me? No, I'm rich. Rich as you are. Now, you're crazy. Now, look, the way we were married, you didn't expect me to stick it out, did you? No, of course not. I only minded what you did with Black Emmanuel. I only mind what happened to me after a few months working for him. How did you get in? 
I know your maid. I got a key from her, snitched it out of her bag. I'll call the police. No, you... you... What? What's the idea? This is the second time a gun's been pointed at you. Second time I know of. What do you want? You're rich, wife, three kids away at a fancy school. Make sense, will you? Sure. Nobody's seen me come in. The key I got's for the little door off the terrace, the one that's being fixed with tar. What's that got to do with us? I'm going to leave this gun with you, Frank. You're going to... Sure. What? I'm going to give you the chance you never gave me. That's why I prayed you'd be successful and rich, to make it harder on you. Now, look, 10000 to fix things, my check, or cash. I got that much cash in the safe. Maybe even more. Yeah, huh? sure, even more. Oh, I'm enjoying this. I picked a night when the butler'd be off and the maid's off and your kid's away at school and your wife at some doing or Stop other. it! You had your fun, now take the money and go! You don't owe me a penny. Not a red cent. Only your life. Your life for mine, Frank. Why, you are crazy. I figured it all out. Be like this when I'd find you. If I kill you, it'll be a big scandal. Your wife and kids would be dragged in, and people would find out you never even bothered to get a divorce from me. I, I thought you were dead. But I'm going to give you a chance. Here, take this gun. Take the gun? People think you killed yourself that way. Save your wife and kids a lot of scandal. See, I'm giving them a break, too. <laughs> so you'd think I'd use this gun on myself, eh? Figuring on using it on me, huh? Why not? You broke in, threatened me? Sure. Only I left a lot of letters around and a marriage certificate signed by Will Higginbottom as a witness. Will? They'll ask him. He'll be glad to tell what he knows. Then I wonder how your wife and kids will take it, huh? No, Frank, you won't use that gun on me because you can't. It's a lot better if you use it on yourself. No, I, I, I can't do that. I, I can't. Why not? Why not? It's easy, Frank. I killed myself a long time ago, only not with a gun. Mine was dirtier and hard. No, please, for heaven's sake, I'll make it up to sure, you. Sure, with that. Goodbye, Frank. <laughs> Boy, my prayer sure was answered. Now, where are you going? Oh. Where are you going? And I want to hear that gun go off before I get back out on the terrace. Because if I don't... Oh, please don't! Listen to reason, will you? Please don't! Well, that's the story, Broadway. A good one, huh? Oh, first rate. You must tell me another one sometime, Rose. Be glad to, Broadway. We'll see you around, Broadway. Charlie? Sure, Broadway. Yeah, drop in again. After a long time. <sighs> she can really dream them up. Poor old Dow. You think that story is a dreamer? Why, sure. Look, do you hear of a guy by the name of Frank McQuillan knocking himself off? No. There is never anything in the papers about it. And when a guy with as many potatoes as Rose says this Frank has got bumps himself, there is always a big thing in the papers. I guess you were right, Charlie. But that doll can really make them dreams sound real. So I and Charlie go back to our room again. And we think no more about the story about Rose's friend. But it is not the end. And what the payoff is, I will tell you in a minute. Well, it comes up a couple hours later, which makes it about two in the morning. We stop the rummy game while Charlie waits on a customer. Then he comes back over to me and says as follows. Broadway, do you remember what I say about the papers? If this Frank bumps himself, it has got to be in the papers. Sure, why? A customer leaves this newspaper. Just idle like I glance at it, and what do I see but this? Millionaire suicide. I... Go ahead, read it. Police this evening were called to the home of Frank McQuillan to investigate what was apparently a suicide. The butler discovered the body in the study about 11 p.m. after returning from the movies with the maid. Butler, maid? Yeah. The butler had been home a half hour before discovering the body of Mr. McQuillan. 
When the police asked him why he, st why, he stated that because he forgot his key, he had been forced to use the terrace entrance under repair. Tar used in the repairs had covered his shoes, and he changed them before going to the study. Like you say, that Rose doll can really dream him up. Sure. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Rose sees this in the early editions and comes in here and gives us the business. Huh? The old doll has a good laugh. <laughs> 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 Boy, are we the saps. Are we the... What is the matter, Charlie? Broadway, only you and Rose and one customer come in here tonight. Is that correct? Sure, why? Rose comes in the back way. You use the front. So does the customer. Well, what are you getting at? Look. Look, from the back door to this table. Yeah, I see. Charlie, you are going to have a real tough time cleaning the floor. Tar is very hard to get off. And so ends the famous Damon Runyon story, Dream Street Rose. The Damon Runyon Theater. The Damon Runyon Theater with John Brown as Broadway is directed by Richard Sandville and the stories adapted for radio by Russell Hughes. Vern Carstensen is in charge of production. This is a Mayfair production. <laughs>